Hello, everyone. Welcome to the new year. This is the Lazy Tech Guys LTG Show, episode 216. My name is Sean Wilburn. I'm Tony Hannity. Uh, I'm Rafa Castro. <laughs> <laughs> we have. Oh my God! I'm Hans. Lee. I'm France. Yep. yep. We got Hans and France. <laughs> All right. So once like, again, it... who's the warrior fan on the group? <laughs> that would be Radford Castro. Radford Castro, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Having me. And who's the other guy that was on here who spoke at the same time? Andrew Lee, this guy. Yep, this guy. <laughs> The guy who, who screwed up the whole jobs. train. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, so just everybody, it's been like a couple of weeks since we've been out. We're all out of practice. We don't even remember anything. What is the show about again? Like shoes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Tony, um, the latest group of Nikes, how were they? Oh, I was talking about pumps and high heels. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. I'm Just a guy. Uh, <laughs> I'm a guy, dude. Sorry. Welcome to March. <laughs> so this is a show where we're going to talk technology, and for this week, this week we're going to talk all about CES. This is all CES episode. This is a big episode. This is the biggest episode of the year at the beginning of the year. So before we get started and before we get into this, I want to give you some contact information. That way so you can absolutely reach it. What was that, Tony? I don't even see what that was. Anyway. I want to give you some contact information. Comments at lazytechguys.com is how you can email us. Tele telephone number, air code 707-722-LAZY, which is 722-5299. And also, if you, we have Facebook and Twitter, Google Plus, if you look Lazy Tech Guys. Now, this show is live on the Google Hangout. So if you happen to be up in the middle of the night like a good programmer should be, then uh, then you can go ahead and join us, and you can you know, join our Q&A. Our Q&A is open. We would love to hear from you and join in with your conversations. Since this is all about, about CES, we'd love to hear your opinions about some of the things they announced and see if you are excited for them as much as we are or not excited for them, depending on what it actually is. Now, <clears throat> before we get into all this CES... Can I start off with something that's non-CES oh, related? Actually, How do you guys not know who Paul McCartney is? Come on! Hey, 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 hey. Don't stop. Stop. Can I actually go back? This came up at work. Okay, before we go on. I was about to ask you guys, how are you guys doing? But apparently, angry Tony is angry about... Tony's angry Tony. about the, the ill uh, education of music history. <laughs> Okay, all right. I have an entirely different counter to that, but I understand why people don't know who Paul McCartney is. But do you want me to get into that now? No, not right now. We'll do it. We'll do a post. <laughs> okay, good. All right, uh, Tony. Besides your anger about Kanye West, like freaking hiring some guy named Paul to play on his song, uh, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> How's your holiday, bro? Good start to a new year. Holidays ended, and everything's back in the full swing of things. So everything's good. No, no. nothing yeah. crazy for Christmas. You didn't get the thing you wanted. And the warrior hat you wanted. I, I I got the the Moto 360 <laughs> smartwatch that I wanted. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah, with you, you don't have it on you right now. <laughs> no, because I had to. Uh, long story short, um, I, I saw the LG watch that's coming out soon, so I returned it. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm gonna get the LG watch instead. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Andrew. How are you doing today? <laughs> doing all right. There's no follow up to that one. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. It's like, Jeez. wow. I, mean, I wonder well, who gave him that gift. I'm so happy he's not. He, just so everybody knows, he stepped away from the mic for a second. So he has no idea we're saying this. But, man, I, well, who got him that gift? Uh, okay, we're on I'm start. guessing a anyway, family so, member? Andrew, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Just yeah, anyway. need some more caffeine in my system. And we'll do even better. <laughs> did you get a lot of gaming or a whole lot of relaxing in this vacation time, or did you just? Oh my god! I'm actually I actually didn't get enough sleep the other night only because I did a one hour marathon, and which is on our YouTube channel by the way, folks. So playing Dragon Age, uh, second way time around on the hardest difficulty. So yeah, it's a lot of. Well, it's real fast. There's just, there's a lady at my work named Wendy who's hooked on that game. She's absolutely just enthralled. So is that game as addicted as you? I mean. As well, it's, she's making it out to be, or is it well, just it's like a border? It, the way they've designed it, it's almost like a borderline MMO, but it's still a single player thing. So it's kind of like your Dragon's Dogma type of oh. game. <laughs> so it's it's, it's 
Yeah, it. it I, 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 words cannot describe the man. fun and the pain of playing that game. <laughs> That's all I have to say about it. No, I'm smiling because I'm like, you just know how to tug at my heartstrings, dude. <laughs> it, it, it's like you're flattering me by saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think you would have fun with this. I don't, I don't, I don't what know. What kind of shoes are those? Because it's, it's the same <laughs> By Nike. <laughs> yeah, they're the pumps, dude. <laughs> they're the new, they're the the new uh, the, the feature, Back to the Future one pumps. <laughs> so, great holiday then, great time, then all that good stuff. Yeah, a lot of gift cards. Oh, awesome. You never say no to that. No, no, you should never say no to those. Brad, Brad long time to see how you've been, bro. I know. Good, brother. Good. Yeah, just glad to be on and just chilling. Yeah, got yeah. your warrior hat and warrior beanie and <laughs> yeah, the warrior here. beanie, catching up with sports, <laughs> catching up with TV shows I didn't catch up with for months. So that's good. Although I'm still a bit disappointed on some shows. I'm like, eh. yeah, yeah, it's all good. Uh, it's not right, man. We ended up at eight and eight. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's fine. We survived. <sighs> at least we didn't have a losing season. All right. So, <laughs> and you know, you know what's upset me? Upset me about this whole thing? We could have beat Carolina. All right. So, yeah. you knew we could have beat Carolina, and <laughs> very hate, very hate Arizona. Anyway. All right. So, <laughs> we're gonna talk about technology. We're gonna talk about CES. There's gonna be a lot of that talk happening here. Um, before we do, um, Tony. Is it okay that we quickly jump over to an ad just because I want people just to know real fast about that before we just go knee deep into CES? Yeah, that's totally fine. All right, so Make it happen, bro. real fast, we want to mention this. Audible.com, I know you hear about it on other podcasts. I know you hear about it everywhere, but the reason why we want you to do it is because, well, this one actually helps us out, and it's actually a still cool service. So Audible.com, we want to use this use this URL, audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Sign up, enjoy it, and, it, well, this is why you like it. This is why you should do so. One, you get a free book in the deal, and these are audiobooks read by professionals. They have plenty of options, so no matter what you're into, no matter how crazy, freaky, awesome, or funny, or humorous, or historic, or whatever it is, they have books for you, and it's very intriguing, very interesting stuff. You get a freebie in the deal when you sign up. You also get free books if you stay a member every month. You get uh, all these cool features like Whisper Sync. It works with all your devices, Android, iOS, and all these other devices that we're going to talk about later on in the show. As we keep on going, it's going to be fantastic. So I want you to check out audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Once again, audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Sign up. Check it out. You're going to quite enjoy it. You're going to get a freebie in the deal and have a lot of fun. So go ahead and sign up. Check it out. All right. Now, we got to talk about CES. We're going to talk about this. But we have three guys, so this is how we're going to do it a little different than normal. Normal, what we do is we just bring up the topics, and one by one we discuss them, but since there's a million topics and a million announcements for CES, we're going to go have everybody go ahead and present their own topics. But to see who starts this show, I want everybody to pick a number between 1 and 10. And I got a number behind my backs. So, Andrew. Three. Brad. Seven. That was mine. All right. <laughs> uh, I go for a dollar. Eight. Got it. Okay. Rad, you go first. Tony, you go second. Andrew, you go third. All right. So, Rad, congratulations. You happen to pick seven. So, all three of us pick seven. Look at us all go. Look at us. So, we are on the same wavelength. Andrew, we need to talk. Why? I'm... <laughs> Sorry. It's like, what? Anyway. What? Anyway. So now we're going to talk about CES. So everyone has different announcements. Many different things are going around. So, Red, why don't you go ahead and start us off, pick something that was announced. Let's talk a little bit about it, why it's cool, why it's not cool, and we'll go on. Oh, I guess one of the things that are coming right now is Intel's button size Curie. It's a low-power wearable. It's basically probably going to be the next thing in wearable technology, which could be pretty much anything now. Wait, wait, so didn't we they have... announce that a thousand times this whole show? <laughs> yeah. Well, they wanted to make sure. <laughs> but basically, this whole thing has a bunch of stuff in it, including Bluetooth, memory, an access sensor, accelerometer, and gyroscope. Just think of all the stuff that's in your smartphone, but it's in that little tiny chip. Um, huh. And now they're going to allow you to have it on as small as a you know a shirt button. <laughs> and I mean, it sounds cool for when, of course, when you just talk about the platform, it doesn't sound like anything you could do about it. But then uh, the cool thing is you could start doing some really interesting things with it. 
So for instance, you could probably, I don't know what you could do, but maybe you could create some like 3D printed like stuff and use that in there. And maybe you could, you know, uh, create some other things that now people can just compete just using these chips now. And instead of having these big, ma big manufacturers competing with like smartphones or uh, smartwatches, people can create their own wearables now, whether it's a bracelet or another watch or maybe a necklace or whatever, they can do that. Wait, I mean, what it's was probably it not as creative. It's called the Curie, the Intel okay. Curie, C-U-R-I-E. Huh, interesting. Yeah. So there's some people old that thought about the obvious stuff, like, you know, the wearables, like putting stuff in buttons and things like that. But I'm thinking of more along the lines of having it on things like, I don't know, on, on toys or even on cars, right? So you could just have it attached on cars, and then maybe on your car you have a gauge that shows all of the different things, like the orientation of where your car is at when you're driving at certain angles and how fast you're going because it has accelerometer, even though you have a speedometer, right? But at least a speedometer is not going to be as reactive as this thing. So um, this could be more accurate, more powerful. You could probably attach this to cameras, right? So maybe you have it on high-speed cameras. You can see how fast your camera is traveling and what orientation it's in. So from a broadcaster standpoint, you could see all of this different data and see, you know, what angle is it best on, right? If you want to imitate that angle, some either have to look at the lens or you could just use some numbers now. Put the numbers in and then the camera just angles the way it should be. Okay. All just from this little thing. So let me get this right. Okay, so this is some kind of little chip that is designed for companies to put inside a device, like a watch or a body part, anything. not inside the body part, Pretty much anything. On, a, on a wristband to say, I'm going to travel from point A to point B, and I want you to measure how far I'm going, or this how fast I'm going, or something like that. How fast or what orientation, you know, like, basically, are you, are you facing 45 degrees down or 90 degrees up? Are you on a higher elevation versus a lower elevation? You know, that kind of stuff can be useful. Now, so. is it something for an end user to put on their clothing, it sounds like, or is it yeah. something for manufacturers to put into their their devices? Like no, it's the manufacturers and would be, you know, would, would be or want to be designers that want to get into the whole realm of just building stuff. Now, obviously, hmm. it's probably not going to be something like where, hey, can I just buy one from Intel for like 10 bucks and just build something? Probably not. You know, you're probably going to have to get some contract with them where you're going to have 10,000 of those things <laughs> and then, you know, build something, right? So, yeah, obviously, you have to create a prototype. But um, as long as you know the specs of it, then you know you pretty much have all, the only thing left to do now is think about what kind of product can I create. So, I mean, there's a lot of applications for it, and it's not just limited to wearables. So hmm. there's a lot of guys that looked at it and said, "Hey, oh, we could we could collect a lot of data just doing a bunch of stuff, like just doing camera work, right? Like one of the biggest issues with camera work is that whenever you set up a camera anywhere, whether it's movies or videos, your music video or whatever, you want to try to imitate that angle. It's super hard to do it, right? Because mm -hmm. You know, they're they're doing it by eye. You have this thing on. You know what angle. You know how high you are. You know how fast the camera is traveling. And then wham, you can put that same setting for somewhere else. Just attach the thing to the next camera, or just install it to the next camera. Or maybe Intel just sells it to I don't know, like JVC, Sony, any of those guys, and bam, they have a new, you know, they have a new feature, hmm. right? It has a built-in, you know, built-in, you know, Curie inside or Curie inside, whatever they call it, right? And <laughs> powered I don't know what the hell they're going to call it, right? Yeah, powered but it, by Curie, you know that. Powered by Intel, <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, the cool thing is that when you have that, I mean, it's cool to see that you can actually do those kinds of controls, right? So instead of having using like a jib, you know, to lift your thing, you could just say, oh, I'm just going to tell my jib to lift up to this, this angle at this weight at this speed, and it just does it. Hmm. So. so, all right, well, I was thinking like... Um, one other use for this is uh, spying on your friends. You could throw it on the bottom of their car and see where they went. I'm joking about that. The uh, <laughs> I don't know this I actually wish. pretty. <laughs> I, just, I, this sure. kind of, I know. To me, this looks like a way that um, they can get in there and kind of yeah, build a low end, a what do you call it, a low end um, wearables like uh, uh, market. Excuse me. Thank you. A wear and low, wearables market. So instead of just the Motorola and the big guys playing in there, why can't we have the hundred dollar to hundred fifty dollar ones? And if all the inexpensive ones are powered by Intel, seems like a good position for them to be in. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Tony, what do you bring to the table? So, you guys know I'm real big on uh, 
Android, obviously. No, no, no. no. Well, the newsflash. You are so iOS, bro. If I've known anyone. Fan of Android. <laughs> and one thing that they announced that uh, Firefox, Google I/O was uh, <laughs> Firefox OS. Wait, what? There you <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they they announced uh, the next uh, their next attempt to have some sort of uh, in car inter- uh, infotainment center, and so uh, Android Auto was born. And a lot of people were wondering, does this mean I have to buy a whole new car? Uh, can I use my phone as Android Auto, or do I just have to buy a deck? Um, all those answers are true. Uh, you can use your own phone eventually, or you could buy a new deck. And one of the manufacturers that was displaying their new decks was Pioneer. Parrot is also another one, as well as, I think, Kenwood. And the nice thing about these decks, um, they're also compliant with Apple's CarPlay. So if I did switch to the dark side, <clears throat> I could uh, get my iPhone to work uh, with said decks. Now the three of them, at a, at a you know as, at a mo- at a glance, I'm looking at the three, and aside from price point, I don't really see the difference. It ranges between seven hundred dollars all the way up to fourteen hundred dollars, and on the on the you know you know their uh, bullet point of specifications of their differences. There's no difference. I think one of them is a DVD <laughs> player. I don't know. Like, I, I really, I, I, okay. This one, I think the more expensive one offers uh, in dash navigation, which the cheaper one does not. But then I don't know what the more expensive one has over the middle ground one. So I really don't know. All I know is it's still out of my range of buying it for my car as of right now. But if you are in the market to kind of upgrade your car in the next couple of months, keep an eye out on you know uh, car stereo you know retailers or even places like Best Buy and, and Fry's, and so you can see uh, this uh, this new kind of add, add on to iOS and Android uh, for your heart. So I'm excited. Yeah. Awesome. Peace be right. with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of jumping around right now happening here. Maybe because we have four people on, Google doesn't want to work so well. Andrew, what do you got, man? Well, it looks like uh, I know last year when we went to – well, not last year, but the, was it the year before, I think? Yeah. When we went to CES, I know we were following uh, Lexus and their uh, – safety uh, technology. So it looks like Toyota came out and opened up some uh, hydrogen fuel patents for uh, for competitors. So uh, apparently they we're announcing that uh, rivals to Toyota don't have to pay royalties to use any of its uh, 5,680 patents globally that relate to hydrogen fuel cells. Um, so that includes fuel cell stacks, pri- uh, high pressure tanks, fuel system software, and project uh, production and supply. Um, so it's a pretty good deal. I mean, one of the th- nice things that they showcased also was their um, new car concept. It's uh, called the uh, Mirai, I believe. It's pretty mm-hmm. nice. I know we were talking about this earlier prior to the show. But um, it's actually pretty quiet. I was actually looking at some of the YouTube footage that they had on the car. It's actually very, very quiet. It's almost like a like a hybrid until it actually starts accelerating, then you actually hear the, uh, it's like a low but high-pitched uh, whining noise. Do you, you think that, time. oh, go ahead. Do you, do you think that uh, other manufacturers will not necessarily adopt this, but try this out over Teslas? Because didn't Elon Musk open up his patents to a degree saying, hey, as long as you quote saying that, you know, it's, you know, uh, uh, engineered by Tesla, you can use our you can use our patents on batteries. <laughs> I think it's possible. I mean, I know when, the first time I ever looked into like hydrogen fuel cells or even even heard of it was I was in high school. But then BMW at the time, I think they were That's testing right. out a five series. That's right. It was a five series uh, hydrogen fuel cell, and that, uh, the only reason why I remember it was from uh, Weatherford over in um, over in Berkeley. So they had a small segment on Channel Two, our local news channel. And they were talking about, you know, the possible future of using hydrogen fuel cells as the the mainstay over, you know, your traditional fossil fuels, which, you know, is really great because it emits no no type of uh, green yeah greenhouse effect uh, emissions. So, it's it's definitely interesting. Um, I awesome. definitely would want to sit in there and kind of take a drive, but uh, I don't know about that uh, zero to sixty in nine seconds deal though. <laughs> but, um, Get, uh, Andrew, are you familiar also with the um, the Honda FCX Clarity? 
like under the <sighs> set. I'm not, but it sounds familiar though. I probably yeah, it's also like it. Honda. So their uh, Honda. That's when I started following it. Is when they were talking about fuel cells with Honda. It's actually really cool. Um, I'm still trying to wonder how that's all going to play out because you still need a hydrogen station to do all of this stuff in, right? So, but I'm I'm all for that. I mean, fuel cells should be the future. But I think we're just in transition, right? So we're just. Well, I, mean, I think what the, one of the big things right now, like you were saying, is it's not just the transition part. It's what they're trying to expand on the technology. I think they there is a potential there, <laughs> just like you would see, like. Um, with the whole, whole half gas, half electric uh, engines you see with the, Pri- uh, the Prius, and um, I think like the Nissan Leaf as an example. Yeah. yeah. But um, I think they just they just want to see like the cost effectiveness of converting like a whole society over from what we've been doing for the oh, past man. several millennia. So many. I mean, there's a lot. Of, I, that's a whole topic in itself. But I was yeah. I was gonna say to me it sounds like Toyota wants to make sure the millions and millions that they invested into this technology gets used by other companies instead of just their own because keeping it to yourself may not be the smartest thing of all time. But I agree with Tony. So, Red, what else you got, my friend? <laughs> uh, uh, this one I think is cool. In the more small scale things, uh, we have the USB Type C, which basically is another type of way to plug in USB. You know. That, oh, so wow. you guys are familiar with micro USB, obviously, right? So micro, uh, USB Type C is actually, you know, micro on both sides of the cable, right? Most of the time you'll have a USB cable where it's just a typical USB, and then you have micro. But this one looks like micro, but isn't. Uh, but it's similar in scale, similar in size, and similar in ease of use. But uh, the Type C is a very exciting type of technology, even though it doesn't sound as exciting. Um, you, you, it, it just allows things like mobile, desktop, and all these different types of devices to be able to plug in through almost anything without having to worry about you know hardware and engineering design. And um, I find it actually very exciting. The first of them to actually announce something like this is MSI. MSI, which has been known for doing gaming laptops and desktops and stuff like that. They also do a lot of different motherboards. And so now MSI has been fully embracing this and really pushing for USB Type-C. And this allow, allows you know, other OEMs to be able to provide Type-C based like you know, devices. And it makes it a lot easier, more mobile, more smaller, uh, less less power consumption. So it's faster a, it's, transfer speeds at all or yeah, is it faster, <laughs> definitely faster transfer speeds, which is very amazing considering, you know, uh, the size at which those ports are coming in. So I'd be um, interested to see a, a benchmark against uh, Thunderbolt. They did. So that's another thing I wanted to mention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I knew that. I can't yeah. wait. Let's see what we got. So for the demo, I'm just going to quote off this first paragraph. It says, for the demo, the group used two Samsung Evo drives together on a RAID 0 setup. RAID 0 is basically two hard drives being, you know, talking to each other. And the benchmark test showed a sustained speed of 800 megabits per second for both read and write. So prior to 3.1, that was only available in Thunderbolt. Now they're matching them, which is nuts. So uh, USB 3.0 was wait, kind wait, of... what? Sh- really? Hang on. So USB 3.0 was actually on the short end when it was going head-to-head with Thunderbolt. At 3.1 with a Type-C connection, it's matching them. It's nuts, That's, which is crazy. Yeah. So now that puts Intel in the back because, you know, now everyone can choose to go AMD or Intel and still have the speed. Right. Which is awesome, right? Because before you had to get it all Intel, mostly into architecture to take advantage of Thunderbolt. Not the case here now. So... All right. So you guys, Red, you understand, or you guys understand how that math between the 800 megapips and all the mega, whatever, what is this, MB, megabits. What, megabits, how megabits. that translates to real-world data, like things we would see? Uh, like, how would, how would that translate over? I'm curious. That's actually just like that, 800 megabytes. All right, here. I'll Where put it this way. It won't take me four hours to transfer all my stuff from one computer yeah. to a new computer. Just think of it this way. It takes, it'll take you one second to transfer a movie. It's really that fast. That's really fast. That's very fast. I mean, Thunderbolt is about it, close to a gigabyte. But so. that's, these are all still Take theoretical my money. speeds, though, right? I'm sorry? These are all still theoretical, though, right? No, these are some of these are actually proven. And the only thing that's always... Uh, the reason why they're pushing that high is because they're on SSDs, and it's a RAID 0 setup. RAID 0 is super, super fast. Yeah, yeah that means okay. You have two, yeah, two hard the, drives working in tandem like that. And it's hard okay. to get that kind of bandwidth unless you do that setup. 
All right, here, the reason why I'm bringing this up and why I'm asking is this theoretical or is it actual is because I happen to have a Thunderbolt hard drive hooked up at RAID 0 setup right now on my computer, and I did not get those speeds. Right, because so you have a different – your CPU would have to play a part in it, yeah, right? Okay, so I'll, right. see, that's, those are the questions Memory I'm asking. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, so there's other factors, so it's just not always 800. No, it's not. Because Thunderbolt, even, they, even though they claim it's the same thing, is not always their number two. It's like there's a lot of factors that go in. Right, it's like looking at a computer <laughs> game, and you're like, oh, the recommended specs are the required specs. You know what I mean? Okay, got it. All right, so I just want to be very clear about that. If for anyone else is listening, they're hearing that number. And when you said 800, I'm like, wait, dude, I just did a Thunderbolt hard drive that didn't get to that speed. That's why I asked you that question. I'm like, wait, wait, yeah. what? But again, right. you can't. You still need to have – when you're using Thunderbolt, it has to be Thunderbolt all the way across the board. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, including – I don't know what version of Intel you're using, but yeah. Okay. So, nice. all right. Uh, <laughs> Tony, what you got, my friend? So, Rad and I both brought this up. If you're looking to do some cable cutting in the next uh, few oh, months yeah. or so, Dish launched Sling TV. And the nice thing about Sling TV is you don't need a cable subscription or a satellite dish on your ca- uh, car, on your house. Um, your house could be a car. Um, it's, for 20 bucks a month, uh, over, the, uh, over the Internet, you would be able to get uh, TV shows such as ESPN, the Disney Channel, uh, HGTV. I mean, it, it all kind of depends on what subscription that you have. It starts at 20 bucks a month, and then for 5 bucks more, you can get, like, a kid section, and then $5 additional, you can get, like, more news and the uh, lifestyle. But for a maximum of thirty dollars, not being tied to, I would say not being tied to a contract as well, not being tied to uh, um, being forced, you know, to have a bunch of uh, channels that you may or may not use. These, uh, this is a pretty good start for the uh, ultimate cable cutter. There is a downside though, although it does work on things like the Xbox One and your iPad and your Android device. You can only use one of these things at a time. So, I'm just kidding, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is early days, it's early stages, so obviously there's going to be a few things that aren't going to be the best out of the box. I, I'm, I'm sure you can't officially cast this or mirror this onto a TV, uh, but still, this is, a good, uh, this is a good start. I'm excited for it. I don't yeah. think I would sign up, but, no. it, but it's, it's a, a good sign. start for someone who's... Wait, 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 yeah, wait, it's not I'm curious, sign. why would you guys not sign up? I'm just curious. Uh, because the way that Comcast has, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, shafted me, uh, if I if I <laughs> if I just go internet only, um, my bill goes up by twenty bucks, and then yeah. I add this on, I'm I'm, I'm back up to forty dollars. Like, there's there's no point. Okay. Yeah. Rad, is the same situation for you? Similar. I guess the other bigger question is, are those channels the ones I want to watch? You know what I mean? Well, and yeah. thing is and there's no to... DVR, too. That's the other thing. Yeah. It's not DVR. Yeah. It's, That's it's, another it's... big thing, too. Um, okay. Aereo was one of those companies I was hoping that would kind of go this route, but right. Dish is taking a scaled-down version of what Aereo is doing and just did this just to see what would happen because they saw a market for it, right? And they decided, hey, let's just try and see what happens. And, you know, who knows? They might jump in. It's just that I, I'm in the same boat as Tony. It's sort of weary when you try to jump in a cable company that, in the first place, doesn't want you to leave cable in the first place or dish, you know, so yeah. it's one of those weird things. Hence why they're I mean, trying to control the pipes as quick as possible. Exactly. They're trying to, yeah. Yeah, so um, I noticed that the channels that they have here are Turner Classic and Viacom channels here they listed, right? Mm-hmm. So I see ESPN, ESPN2... Uh, TNT, TBS, Food Network, HD. Okay, I do know that some of the ESPN, some of the TVs and all that stuff is about $35 or so on cable. Right now, I'm not, I don't have any of those channels, so for $20, it will be cheaper for me to get them for $20 than paying $30 the other way. So I could see in some ways it could be beneficial, but it, I think if we had more competition in the Internet world, this would be a bigger deal. But I'm happy somebody's doing it. Yeah. yeah, someone's got to break the door down first. Yeah. And it's interesting that it's Dish, but they already made that uh, agreement with Disney last last year. I, I forget what the agreement was exactly, but it, <laughs> it, it turned a lot of heads, and this is just another step in that direction of allowing people to you know, go Internet only if they want to uh, uh, consume their content that way. So I ask this question again: When is that net neutrality ruling? So Andrew, what do you got to the what do you got to bring to the table, man? What else you got? <laughs> uh, well, let's see. A lot more announcements. Uh, well, I guess we could start off with that uh, Lynx 9, the transformer controller thing that I showed you. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, that, that thing. The crab. So, like, I'm like, 
So I mean, it, to put it, just describe it to it people. Simply, it, it's like it's as what Sean says. It does look like a crab, but it looks more like a transformer or something. Our friend uh, Victor would have been playing with and definitely would have in his collection for sure. Um, but it's a mobile. It's a Bluetooth wireless uh, mobile controller that you tie into your mobile device. Uh, more likely a cell phone. Not necessarily a tablet, but I think you could probably use it with it as well. But um, it's uh, retailing for about, I think, $300. <laughs> but it, it looks it looks pretty neat, considering what it looks compact size-wise, and then when you unfold it, it's just... Man, that it, it's definitely for somebody who wants to get more out of their mobile gaming, but I'm just like, wow... <laughs> Yeah, it looks that's, like that's the easiest way. Sure. That's the easiest <laughs> way. It, 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 it looks like that. Looks like that little racist transformer from those movies. I swear. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> god it's but it blue hair. God, I hate those two little crap. Well, I mean, to even no. take it a step further, right? <laughs> no, it's what it, it's literally. Like, uh, I was say, it's gonna get up and that. attack me, bro. That thing's gonna attack me, man. <laughs> I've seen the movies. I know what the thing will do. I was gonna say. I, I just kind of noticed it now. It literally almost looks like a PS2 controller with a little um, QWERTY keyboard attachment that you would have to it. If you played a lot of uh, PSN online, oh, like that. that's what it literally <laughs> reminds me of. Like, didn't they release a PS3 controller with a stupid attachment, or didn't they have an attachment no, no, for yeah, the PS3? Yeah. 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 PS3, yeah. sorry. This king that's is shit from the first movie. <laughs> I was like, wow. Seriously, he's like up there hijacking from the plane. No, seriously, I, I, mm -hmm. I have the Transformer that's a you know, little PlayStation <laughs> controller, and it looks like this. All right, I'm well, sorry. at least you know they're... $300, huh? That's nuts. God, dog, dude. You know, I know they really, really want gaming and to go mobile, but and I, they're really, really getting the controllers to go that way, but, dude, they're starting to move beyond where the games actually are at this point. <laughs> I, yeah. All right, well, maybe so, the games will catch up. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Brad, what do you got, man? Oh, man. All right, we'll go back see. to your email. Here we go. I know. <laughs> I'm like, I okay, you, I switch have all your emails oh, switching over. Oh. <laughs> all right. One. Okay, what do I got here? Oh, I got the Apple Home Kit. That's, oh, what do we got here? Yeah, it's basically, uh, it's basically a Switch smart plug. Nothing really new. I just a little bit more cleaner. It's an iDevice that Apple is working with with Home Kit, where they, you know, people can just turn stuff on and off. It's a very straightforward, simple device that, you know, works with, you know, your iOS device and stuff like that. But it's basically part of HomeKit's smart home initiative. Um, the really cool thing mm -hmm. about it, though, is that it has all these different uh, little uh, nuances which can work with Belkin, D-Link, and all these uh, different smart plugs. But it's just kind of a cool thing. It just seemed, it seemed like this is something that should have came out a long time ago, but this is the first I've heard of it. At least, but I haven't seen any other similar thing to this, which is just surprising. And you know, we've been to CES before, what, two years ago and the year before that. And I would expect to see something like this. Wait, I but don't again, understand how this is different than the Belkin Wemo <laughs> switch. That's what I'm like, what exactly yeah. is special about this? I don't. Is no, this just using the Apple? The Apple? <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah, Apple. I'm, this, get, I'm trying to get it too. <laughs> is this literally just using the Apple HomeKit protocols? Is that is that all the difference really? I think that's one of the biggest things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Good for yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. And it's okay, cheaper. So, it's like do, 50 no, bucks. They're all 50. Well, the Belkin's 50 bucks, too. So oh, is it? Oh, shit. Yeah. So yeah, the Belkin's pretty easy. Do the, the Belkin's and the D-Link <laughs> not uh, adhere to the Apple controls? Do they do to another protocol? What's going on with those? They no, that's use... specific. That's uh, Wemo. Right? Yeah, Wemo that's... uses, like, Wi-Fi and, like, okay. what's that? Z-Ray? Z Z-Band? Yeah. I would see Something. it on Wemo. <laughs> they have it there. <laughs> but um, yeah, all of these guys now they're trying to get they're trying to make the um, home automation more consumer friendly in terms of prices and so uh, before they used to be in the thousands of dollars I mean I would go to the National Association Broadcasting Conference which is also in Vegas and those things would range up to like 10,000 now they have them for a few hundred dollars where you just buy like the unit for 300 bucks and you put all this uh, stuff in now um, I'm seeing this other article on HomeKit where you can actually see the voltage at which all of the devices are being pumped at you could turn them on and off you could have them timed and everything similar to what Wemo does and you have a few other things they're like changing the color of the you know the plug that you put in there or whatever mm -hmm. some of them are like you know, horizontal versus vertical, which is kind of cool, but it's it's kind of cool. I just thought it was something that was kind of neat, simple. You know what? You know what this really is, right? This is 
a glorified remote control version of the thing that we used to put on our lights when we left the house and go on vacation, yeah, just so called... the lights would turn on and off at certain times of day. Yeah, <laughs> those, we call it the clapper. That we used to turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, no, no, what do you call it? Oh, the thing that you put in a circle, you put the climbs in here. It's and it goes, got a like, timer. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the timer. About. Yeah, I, yeah, I had yeah. one of those. Looks like it belongs we, in your kitchen, but is yeah. it? No, well, you no, you put on a red. Come on, you you yeah, had to have it. Yeah, yeah. This is like the glorified futuristic version of what that thing has been after all these years. So I think this is going to be a huge success because this is useful. We yeah, can actually so feature anybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, back to the future. Oh, come on, man. I'm still yeah, waiting for the damn surf. No, I'm kidding. We got our. <laughs> we're finally, we're finally, we're finally, we're finally getting our. We're finally yeah. getting our hoverboards. Finally, Rat, Tony, you and I have talked about it many times. So, all right, Tony, what do you got, man? So in the. Uh, in the same uh, facet of home automation, uh, Wemo, Wemo. Uh, Belkin, has announced a new line of not only new products, but also a new subscription plan, uh, which uh, would allow you to have like um, emergency phone numbers. So if something happens to your house and uh, you know the, the alarm is going off or whatever the case may be, if you get text messages and and uh, phone calls and you're not answering, uh, Wemo has the ability now through that sub- the premium subscription to call another emergency contact, like your neighbor or your friend down the down the street, that might be able to you know better get a uh, get a hold of you and or the uh, police slash fire department. Um, so that's one thing that Wemo did. The other so thing too does that cost more money? Is that included? Yeah. No, that's 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 the subscription. If you don't do the subscription, okay. it's really just home automation of okay. I can turn my lights off and on without being home. So they're adding that feature to that, so now it's better. It's just a better service in general. Right, and it's getting a little bit more into than why should I do this versus paying for ADT or Bay Alarms, but it's just another option, right? Well, now that now it's like ADT because because that's exactly. one of the things. Like, yeah, I, it's, it's you, going the opposite yeah. direction. It's going the opposite direction, whereas ADT is you know you know it's a subscription based alarm. Oh, and now we can do this. Now Bay Alarms allows you to remotely access your lights and access your hmm. heater, uh, as well as Comcast. Comcast is doing the same thing with our whole like yeah. uh, over oh, cable yeah. right. system. Yeah. Uh, Belkin and you know the likes of iDevices and other companies like that. Um, you know Philips with their Philips Hue and Smart Smart Things. Uh, what, that's now a Samsung property. Uh, they're going the opposite direction. They're saying, let's control your home from your phone, and oh, by the way, uh, you can now have an alarm. And so it's interesting. There's there's kind of a convergence of these two different mindsets in the technology, and where we're going to come into, hopefully, is a better standard because here's the thing. We have the uh, uh, Apple HomeKit standard. Uh, we've got this standard that Wemo works with, but it also kind of works with the Samsung standard, and then I think it was LifeX and Qualcomm are making their own standard, and so the the word standard is not really a standard anymore. It's just a confusing mess. But um, what what this really just points out is looking at these like different LED bulbs. If you remember, LED bulbs used to be like you know fifty, sixty dollars. Last year they got down to thirty bucks, and now they're going for like ten, twenty bucks. And they're going to be the exact same kind of cost-saving measure, and Belkin is getting in on that. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm definitely excited to see uh, when this gets out in the uh, in the actual world to see how many people are actually going to take take advantage of this um, kind of home automation. Because like you, we we uh, are joking back and forth about Back to the Future. That's what they had. They had the whole kind of you know you you could do that, and um, certain things would happen. Um, you know, or you know, fr- from your, your your phone, certain things would happen in your house. So you don't have to be there. Now we have it, but people are a little scared about it because of the whole privacy stuff. And does this really save me money? So we'll see how it goes. It's so funny. Did you see the comic I sent you guys? It's called Standards. It goes, situation, there are 14 competing standards. Two people are talking, and they go, 14, ridiculous. We need to c- develop one universal standard that every- covers everybody. And they go, situation, there are now 15 competing standards. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, man. That's it's so true. true. For everything, right? Well, everybody has their own idea of well, how to do something correctly. And um, I, I, this is kind of an offshoot, but if you guys know anything about wireless charging technology, um, Two of the main competing companies have decided to, 
I don't know if they're actually merging or more so working together. So we're going to go from three competing standards down to two competing standards. So that's a good thing. We're, we're, yeah. we're getting down to just there one or go. two. Competition <laughs> isn't a bad thing. I'm all for competition. What, what becomes an issue is that when it becomes hard for people to not have the convenience of that competition, then it, there's no point in having it out there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. Andrew, now get off your soapbox, dude. You're all good. All right, Andrew, what do you got, bro? <laughs> well, technically, I'm stealing this one from Tony. Uh-oh. We kind of technically introduced this earlier, but... Um, technically. Technically. Um, it looks like NVIDIA is focusing more on the smart car or more of a connected car than, um, say, other items showcasing a new Maxwell GPU, ter their first uh, teraflop uh, processor. So... Wait, which link is this? I'm looking for it, sir. Oh, give me a second. Sorry. I kind of jumped the gun a little bit there. Jumping. Found Jumping. It. So this one's their Tegra X1 mobile super chip. It's a processor bouncing a 256-core GPU with an 8-core 64-bit CPU. I'm pretty sure Brad's, like, giggling now. <laughs> but um, they kind of put in comparison... Uh, the one teraflop, teraflop uh, processor was the same power that the world's top supercomputer had in, in the millennium, world, uh, year 2000. Which so, is called dinosaur age in the world of computers. Right. So now it's about the size of a, <laughs> a penny, roughly. About your thumb or so. So It's pretty pretty big deal, to say, to say the least. <coughs> That's nuts. So... Okay, so this is just another chip that's going to make our cars even smarter, more computerized, and harder to work on as we get older, right? <laughs> I mean, hey, guys, really, have you guys tried to wear the oil lately? No, just kidding. So, <laughs> <laughs> no. so, so this is the uh, smarter, faster yeah, chip. They're, they're, they're pretty much citing that this is going to be the thing that's going to be powering your car for you know all the different... Um, different features that you might have. Like, you'll see, like, a lot of the new lineups for cars, they have, like, built-in Wi-Fi, they have all these different features, but, you know, what's the power behind it and everything? Hmm. So, you know, gives gives people the incentive to add more stuff to the, the car. Um, two things here. Hmm. Actually, really one thing. <laughs> How great is this guy's leather jacket here that he is sporting on stage? I mean, in all the close-ups where they show in the video, they keep showing this guy's jacket, and I'm just like, that guy has a really fast car. <laughs> that guy is bat Black Moon Rising all over again and just doesn't know it. Just want to let you know. Just, I, I, I'm sorry. It just That's just a great jacket. I'm sorry. I dig that. Um, real fast. Tony, can I steal a topic from you? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to ask. All right, let's make sure. All right, cool. All right, adding on to this here, which is great that they're doing this. Um, I know this is one of the other topics that kind of go along with the car things for doing this. Pioneer is going to offer auto Android auto integration in all their car, their current cars, starting this upcoming March. So if you happen to be using the Next Experience, the Network ex Entertainment Experience, um, they're going to be Android compatible in a couple months. So, I already talked about that. Oh, I'm mad. I don't care. I already talked about that. That's what I said. That's, you know, I didn't whole, hear you say next. I'm sorry. Dude, I'm no, sorry. but that, that, that's my whole I like Android stuff because, you know. No, okay. I don't hear that. Anything. Don't beta sign-ups? No, no, no beta. No, no. No, 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 no. Oh. No way. I was trying to steal one from Tony here. trying to make something happy. Try to go with the car thing. Thought it would be really cool because I... I thought you were going to steal the Mercedes-Benz say... one. Oh, well, where's, where's, where's the Mercedes-Benz the Benz one? <laughs> you guys didn't see this? Luxury and motion. Here we go. Da, 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 da. Oh, this, it's a nice looking car, but I. This you, is a you self. Talk this about is this a concept here. self driving car. Uh, we'll talk about it later, but I want to go in order of the person who got number seven and the choose the number plan. So it's Rad's turn. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So by the way, Pioneer's cool and iDevices are cool and all these other things are cool and now we shall continue. Now, Rad, you can go. Rad's so cool, too. He is cool. He's, he's a warrior of uh, beating on. Yes. Rad. Oh. All right, oh. can't hear you, bro. Can't hear you, bro. Rad's oh, muted. 
He's stumped. <laughs> there you go. Okay, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. 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 All right, what do we got, bro? All righty. So we're not going to be talking about iOS or Windows-based devices, but an Android ultra-thin Venue 8 7000 tablet from Dell, which is now considered the thinnest tablet in the world, no according way. to this article. Yeah, at 6 millimeters. Well, and it has it all of this nice little specs on it. It's basically an 8.4 inch tablet at uh, wow quad HD, which is 2560 by 1600 OLED edge to edge display, which is pretty darn nuts considering all things. Now uh, I'm looking at the rest of the specs. And I'm just gonna read them off. Uh, it's smaller than a, an iPad Mini 3, yep. uh, but the okay. rear 8 megabit Pixel camera is at the bottom of the device versus at the top, which is yep. interesting. And then two. Wait, wait, what? Yeah. So the MP camera, the the eight megapixel camera, is is at the bottom. So if you're going to be holding your device in a portrait style, you're basically covering the camera, which is kind of funny, considering that when you try to take a picture, the the camera button is typically at the bottom when you're shooting from an Android OS, right? So do you do you see the the the, the picture I have on screen here? Yes, yeah. I do. His his left thumb is covering the camera. Yes. And then, yeah, what what you said is true as well too. That there's there's three cameras on the back. Mm-hmm. It's, okay. it's are the cameras on the back the top or are they at the bottom? Yeah. And I don't know bottom. if that's an engineering well, thing. How you, look, I would hate this thing because I imagine the jerk at the concert holding this up trying to record the concert, blocking everybody because the damn cameras are at the bottom of the thing, not the but top. But it's not bad because it's only eight inches. Yeah, uh, dude, and four hundred like, bucks. Like, that's eight inches over my head. I'm sorry, dude. I'm not a short, tall guy. <laughs> that's I mean, that's a big thing. You better anyway. put a mirror on that. <laughs> yeah, you should come with a mirror. I mean, you're gonna have to film everything upside down just so you don't block your neighbor behind you while you're doing this. I know. Excuse me, would you like to hold this for my selfie? <laughs> so, Sean, there's the picture of the three cameras back there. Let me get it here. Yeah. I, I just don't look. I I get the, every. I'm looking at it. The design looks cool. I like the slick look. I like the bottom bar. Everything. Until you said he's covering the camera. I'm like, well. I'm going to be covering the camera the whole time. Yeah. Can I tell you something about this? Yes, I, please. I got a chance to play with it today. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Um, How did nice. you go to CES? <laughs> I didn't have to go to CES. I just went to my Magic. local Magic. All right, so it's nice. I mean... I don't know. It's running KitKat, uh, which is fine. It's the latest, uh, other than Lollipop. Um, there's, there's a little <laughs> sluggishness <laughs> in, in the... the <laughs> There's a little sluggishness uh, on the uh, on the app switching, and using the camera um, in conjunction of the Best Buy, you know, alarm security so you don't like steal it was very clunky. But I could already tell like we're so used to having the camera on the top mm-hmm. that your fingers are at the bottom when you hold the freaking device. So next thing you know, you're trying to do a selfie with your friends. Like, why can't I take a picture? Like, oh, because my stupid big thumb is in the way. Like, well, that's going to be the exact same issue when you're trying to take a picture of the landscape. So, Sean, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I was just trying to play devil's advocate before. When but I'm the reason the why, I don't know why it's at the bottom necessarily. I think I do. <laughs> uh, but the reason why there's these three cameras is there. it's the same kind of whole Lytro thing, the one, the one that uh, HTC tried to do with the, with the double camera on the HTC uh, One M8, where after, you know, post taking the photo, you can change the depth of field and we kind of already learned that no one really cares about that because you can just do it all in software. Google proved that with their uh, update to Google camera that you can just do it in, in, in software and it's not the perfect and it's not the best but it works mm-hmm. on mobile. You know? hey, but yeah. Rad, you were saying why do you think that they have that like that? It's to make it cheaper. Yeah. I mean it's the only thing I can think of <laughs> Is because okay. when you have to when you get to place anything at the optimal places, there's always going to be more engineering design and more challenges and more time. That means more manufacturing challenges, right? So as an engineer, when you're putting those thing, things together, you're like, well, I have to put the camera over here. <laughs> then to keep it at four hundred dollars at at that profile at six millimeters. I mean, six millimeters is very thin, right? Yeah. To put a camera somewhere else, you have to think about now. You, I mean, you look at a beautiful display, and now you have to think about, okay, where am I going to put this camera, right? I guess so, I understand that because if you have a, a, a bezel only at the top and not at the bottom, that right. kind of looks weird. I, right. I guess I can kind of understand. So it at from the a top, like you notice at the picture that 
uh, all, most of the screens at the top and the bottom that appears right. to be speakers, I would assume, right? Yes, and, that's correct. And so when you have the speakers and just the connectivity, I mean, it's from an engineering standpoint, or at least from a manufacturing cost-cutting standpoint, it's easy. It's easy to just put the, you know, the the cameras right down there. You know what I mean? And say, oh, it's four hundred dollars versus putting it at the upper top and bam, it's now five hundred dollars. Right. I, so, yeah. I mean, things like that, right? When it's the same spec, but you could say, oh, now do we need to start compromising like the resolution now? Do we need to start compromising on like the, the chipset? So. Those are all yeah. things to think about. The, the last thing I'll say about this is that it's the last thing I'll say about this is it's built really well. I mean, it's a, a aluminum chassis. It's it's very sleek body. It has a good weight to it. It's not top heavy like you might think. It it is just something that you. It's an idiom. You will have to get used to it if you buy right. it. You know, it's, you know, where's the camera? Oh, right. Big freaking thumbs covering. Okay, now you're you're used to it after two months. Then that's right. fine. It's almost it's very synonymous to what Dell does because they used to release these other cheaper um, Windows 8 tablets, right? Which was a full Windows 8 tablet. It was like 200 bucks or something, and the power button is like in the weirdest place. You know what I mean? And they didn't care. It was just you know it was not a standard pl placement of where you put power buttons and camera buttons. But this you're is like, we're, we're way way but, but this is but this is more about vanity. This is the yeah, selfie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, real fast here. I'm just going to say, I agree that the price has got to be cheap, and we got to move on here. I agree that the price is cheap. I get it. I, I understand it. I still think it's like one of those things where if you're starting to compromise everything, things to make other things happen, then you're putting brick seats in your nice car because you want it to go fast, but you're sacrificing this because you're putting the steering wheel over here. At this, some point, you got to start <laughs> thinking, is this a really good idea to make this happen? But anyway, we got to go on. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was Tony, or that was you, right? No, that was rad. I'll take this one. Tony, what do you got, bro? So, like I alluded to before, uh, no. Mercedes also showed off a car, and this was more on the concept side of uh, uh, full automation. So the car looks very futuristic. I actually think I think it's ugly, and I don't like those rims whatsoever. Agreed. Um, <laughs> I'm with you. I did not like this car. I was like, but the thing that? about this car, this is the uh, F uh, F zero. Like, a a big uh, ass like you know. Razor. <laughs> it does. Razor. <laughs> it's like I don't, I don't know. Yeah. So this is the shit. this is the Mercedes Benz uh, F015 luxury in motion, and it's funny. Uh, they they have, um, they have it so, and I'll go down to the photos down here. They have it uh, so you can actually uh, not only you know uh, sit in it like a normal car, but you can turn the seat <laughs> so you're facing the person behind you. Wow. So. If you it's guys like remember iRobot, like they were kind of doing that in iRobot a little bit, I guess. iRobot car. <laughs> Actually, it kind of reminds me of, uh, was it the sixth day? Also, <laughs> Minority <laughs> Report. Yeah, it reminds me of freaking uh, t Total Recall, the little robot. That <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Johnny Carr, there you go. <laughs> I was gonna yeah, say so, that uh, in that Star Trek. So field, they were actually but... able to block off a section of the Las Vegas Strip and have it like on the Strip, and a bunch of people were surrounding it, taking pictures and everything. I don't know if they actually drove it or not, but the idea is no, that in the future, itself. with the technology that they that they're gonna have, is you will be able to be completely free of your responsibility to the car and it will get to you from get you from A to B safely and you will be able to do other things like turn and talk to the person uh, I don't know I mean this is, this is an interesting this is an interesting concept this oh is Oh my god why did I have this car at prom time when I was young Yeah no you're right <laughs> This is the prom car mom dad I want to borrow the car we're just going to drive around San Francisco for a while turn the seats in done deal yeah, I mean, we're we're probably never gonna see uh, we're probably never gonna see this car specifically. But what's really good about all this concept stuff is that we're gonna get little bits and pieces from this. So whether it be the stupid uh, aluminum, uh, you know, logo on the front uh, grill of the car, and the, the future uh, Benzes are gonna have that, or we're gonna have stupid rims like that. Or we're gonna have something else inside the car because this th this is actually something that has a um, gesture enabled controls courtesy of Leap Motion. So mm -hmm. if like while you're driving, 
and you're you know you you uh, you get a text message, you can just do like a swipe across your face, and it will uh, delete the text message or something like that. We've seen which, that on Navd, which is um. We've seen that on Navd, which is a uh, which is a crowdfunding kind of startup Kickstarter kind of thing, uh, where you put uh, the the gesture enabled device straight in front of you. Um, so this is going to be interesting that it's already built into cars. So um, I was listening to a, a a car podcast the other day, and the one thing that they they did point out is all the things that we saw maybe five, six years ago in cars that really only pertain to the more expensive cars, we have them now for the more obtainable cars, like um, being able to park themselves. We have those in like the lesser expensive Ford Focuses and things like that. But five years, five years ago, that was like, wow, I have to buy a Bentley for that. So five years from now, I'm not saying that we're all going to have all this gesture stuff, but we're going to have more things that we right now think are unobtainable just because of our wallets aren't that deep. But five years, um, <laughs> it's going to be a little, much, a little bit better for us to be able to get a hold of that kind of technology without having to, you know, remortgage the <laughs> the house third a third time. <laughs> For a minute there, I thought you were gonna say five years from now we're all gonna have Bentleys. I was gonna jump for joy. I was like, yes. No, not no, not so lucky. No. We're not bringing the price down on all cars, <laughs> just some of the technology. <laughs> Andrew, what do you got, man? All I was I was just saying that I, that oh god, why did they pick that design? Oh, that car is so ugly. Oh my god, it just bothers me. Why See, couldn't they make it like the, the the link I just sent to you guys? Why couldn't they make it like an S class? I would have been happy. But that, that, that's all I'm gonna say. But um, yeah, that was just a big ass like electric brawn razor. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was gonna say Tony just comes in four really blades quick. and five. Did they have any uh, other interior shots other than that um that ha where they had the doors open the suicide? Not door really. I, no. I I'm sure some other uh, sites might have, but uh, okay, that particular article did not. Uh, okay, well. Another another release looks like I'm gonna have Chris well have to get another Christmas present early. The only thing is the colors that they chose for this new uh, Rat Pro gaming mouse that Madcast oh announced. It reminds me of a energy drink. Oh wow! Or Legos. <laughs> That's all I can say. But <laughs> it's a trip. Supposedly, the nice thing about it compared to like say some of the other mice I've uh, played around with is they. They're allowing you to swap out different parts on the actual mouse, including the sensor units and the actual mouse wheel. Um, I didn't see anything in, as far oh, also the sensor, excuse me, so optical or laser sensor, but um, I didn't see anything as far as like uh, weights. Like I know some of their other mice that they offer, <laughs> they offer to change out the weights, make it a little heavier. But I don't know, something something I want to try out. <laughs> Definitely. You know, I was thinking, you got, did you guys did you, when you guys were young? Did you guys go through your roller skating roller skating phase like I did, where you know we all roller skated and did all the disco thing? Right? What did do you, you mean guys, phase? Did you guys? <laughs> 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 all right, so Tony, you <laughs> <like a wood. laughs> Okay, so did you guys ever have those roller skates where you're young, where you could pull them apart and make them larger or smaller? That way, you could fit different sizes or as you grow. Do you guys ever see those? No, I only saw the roller skates where that you could like. Um, it went from the the you know standard roller skates to rollerblades to shoes. That's all. That, that those are the ones that I saw. Okay, we're talking kids stuff, like things that they would have for kids growing yeah, up. Yeah, these were so, for I, kids. Oh, mm -hmm. You're kidding. Oh, wow. All right. Well, I'm talking. Well, I'm talking the six eighties are here. Um, this mouse. What I was thinking about was like, do they make a mouse that expands to your hands so people with fat hands you pull it up and it becomes wider so the buttons become wider. I was just thinking like, it, we're getting to the <laughs> point where I'm thinking like they're gonna have a mouse that just attaches to your hand and just goes around it like a claw and it's just gonna be the perfect aerodynamic I, control or something like that. I was that. gonna say there there is something like that back in the oh, day. Oh God, it's what we call the power glove. No. <laughs> 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 Wait, uh, uh, Andrew, don't the rats, don't they expand a little bit, though? Well, I mean, you, well <laughs> like, the difference between mine and this one is this one, they're also including, like, different, um, you also have different palm rests. Yeah, so see. The palm rests, they expand. They have different, like, pinky grips. So this is will, completely like, modular to a degree. Yeah, this is this is a lot modular. It's than not just mine. customizable in color. Well, I don't think it right. is color, but it, it's, like, 
for, yeah, form like fitted a to yeah. a specific hand type. Absolutely. This is part of their, I guess, their new Pro Series that they have. What's hey, the price on this? Back. I'm sorry? What's the price? I didn't see anything as far as price yet. That means it's free. Go get it. Unannounced. <laughs> no. uh, I wish it was free. Right. I, know my, I know my tournament <laughs> edition. Is about, I'll put it this way. I know my tournament edition, This before I blind myself, this one right here. I know that one's... Um, that one retail for about ninety, so it wouldn't surprise me if we were looking at a, at least the hundred dollar range. It wouldn't surprise me. So it goes back to my: Are they going to make a mouse that you just? It's going to mold to your hand, so you put your hand over it. It's going to extend out two inches, go out three inches, and just mold itself to be perfectly for your gamer setup for three hundred dollars. <laughs> Give it a couple uh, years, dude. It's going to happen. Give it a couple years. If, if they do, I'll send one to you, Sean. Oh, then you I can wait. convert In over, a right? You can be a PC gamer. Eyes will be the mouse. Oh, that's gonna be great, Brad. <laughs> what do you got, man? <laughs> I got the Razer Cortex, which what allows is? you to stream PC games to any a, a, any Android-based micro console. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. Where on that, is bro? that one? Where is that link? <laughs> I was Left like, field. No, I just Googled it because uh, that's oh. one of the topics I was talking about. That I'm just going to straight Google. Okay, what's it called again? Uh, All right. It's called the Razer Cortex. Razer Cortex. Got it. Yes. So, and all, it takes me back like to the game spot. You know? Yeah, let me give you guys a link. I got I got it here from RazerCortex.com. Yeah, it's a like quad-core based Razer Forge TV micro console, and it has its own little thing. The uh, console looks like an Apple TV box, except it's black, slightly thinner. And the controller is another ripoff of the Xbox 360. <laughs> no um, way. <laughs> similar to what, like the Fire TV and everything else. So, um, but the cool thing is that it's pretty low cost considering how Razer's usually more on the premium side of things. But this is pretty cool. Um, now, what they're doing here, and I'm just going to read some of this off. It says here that they're now kind of going uh, the stream. They're taking the stream route, which is an update to their game launcher. Now it says, unlike NVIDIA streaming technology, works work with work which works only with NVIDIA GPUs and, and valves, which only works between two PCs running Steam, Razer claims the Cortex, uh, which stream software will work with any Android-based micro console. However, the software will not be pre free, priced at $39.99. So this is basically the Razer Forge TV and the Razer servo controller, which is uh, what you're seeing in the picture, uh, is pretty much just the hardware you know, prototype of what they're trying to really go after. Their core business value is going to be the software itself. And so uh, the whole point really is just to stream all this stuff into an, any kind of Android-based micro console uh, with the option of being able to pick up the Razer Forge TV as something if they wanted to pick it up. But the big thing really is the software. So if you want to just use Razer Cortex, then you're pretty much set. It's basically like a game launcher. So that makes me interested now over how that works. Because I'm assuming that it's still PC gaming, right? And, but you're just streaming. So it almost works like the way... Um, uh, I forgot the name of the other streaming. Well, you had Gaikai and that was doing PC, and then on live, that's it. I was doing that, and so now they're doing, getting these streams, and then, or streams that are similar to this, street, uh, Steam in specifically, and then push that into, you know, a micro console like, I don't know, uh, and, Ouya. and Ouya, or anything that's TV based. It could possibly be even, you know, uh, on the like Chromecast the TV. too. Yeah, or even a Chromecast. What I would, you know, which I the think Chromecast is possible. Chromecast would be able to support this. I don't know. That's the thing. I, the Chromecast I don't know isn't Android based. It's like it's Android slash Chrome based. Yeah, but both. it really won't matter so much whether it's Android based or Chrome based. What matters is as long as it accepts the API from this thing, right? Okay. So, if they say, you know, they're just saying Android based because it's easy for us to understand that, right? But if they can push to other things, there's no doubt in my mind. Like they should be able to stream to almost any kind of device. So. Um, but just based on this, just based on the the Razer Forge TV, if you're, if anyone's interested in that, it's running a Snapdragon 805. It's ARM based with 2.5 gigahertz of so quad core crate. I don't even know any half of this stuff here, but I just know that it has the HDMI output, the same similar stuff you would expect to see on Fire TV. Um, 
what are the we uh, everything else you'd expect to see from a micro console, right? But now these guys are in that space, and knowing Razer, I mean, the biggest thing that that always comes with uh, that uh, they're always known for is like their design and their support. So, and um, I've always liked what uh, the ideas that uh, the company gets into, and plus, you know, it's always low risk when you're getting into this kind of thing. It's not so crazy, especially with Razer's like cash flow. So, but it's cool. I'm looking at it right now. I mean, if you're going to get the actual, you know, peripherals, and if you decide to add, uh, or they're calling it the turret lap board, you can go for it. You know, if you want to get the keyboard, the, con the controller, and the and the micro console. So that's cool. And it's all going to be streaming. So okay, one quick question: the games. What games are we talking about here? That's the question that's looming in my head right now. Is okay. what does that mean? PC games? Does that mean like? You it's know, very Xbox vague. Games. It's it streaming. Says, it says stream your games. Yeah. My games from where? PCs. The, so well, from here. That's the most vague answer. What from what system? Origin, Steam, just something on the computer, something on their network. I mean, what are we talking here? Well, because right now we're assuming it's PC games, right? No, no. Because it says it streams games from their PCs to their living room, right? Yeah. So, not right. talking about with like a service. Like, are they? Yeah. So Razer has services. joined. Like from the top of the article, because Razer has joined the likes of game streaming champions Nvidia and Valve by unveiling Razer Cortex. Okay. Stream. So it's, an, so it's a stream and update to its game launcher Cortex software. So, um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, Andrew, but do, have you ever you tried their game launcher? It's basically just a launcher that just runs Steam and any of these other things that are online, like maybe Origin, and it just fires it into. You know, fires up on your screen. So instead of yeah, having yeah. it fire up on your PC, mm -hmm. it fires now. It streams whatever you're seeing on your PC into whatever micro console. Got it. So this pretty much allows you to transfer your Steam library into your console and stream it directly. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so see, was part of what they were. Yeah. This was part of what they were doing with the Steam console thing they were announcing last year or something. Like. This is part of the technology and being able to stream games over to your thing and have it ready. Yeah, they're trying to do that with uh, Project Shield, right? Yeah. So in this case, it's the other way around because they're getting the instead of going into the pushing to the PC, they're pushing from the PC out. So that's a cool thing if you have a, let's say you have, I don't know, some kind of Android console downstairs already, and you have PC games which are rocking right now, and you have a desktop that's powerful enough. You just go downstairs, download this forty dollars software, and then wham, you're playing PC games on your TV downstairs. So um, I don't know how easy it will be. I think that's something that's probably still in the works, but I mean, concept-wise, concept -wise, it sounds good. I just don't know how the market will respond to it because it's such a very specific market now, right? It's a PC yeah. gamer that has a PC, a powerful desktop, and happens to have a micro console downstairs. You know what I mean? So. Well, if I had a more powerful P, if I had a more powerful PC, this would be something up my alley because I can't afford a four hundred dollar console, but a hundred dollar one that would get my games over to my TV. It's not that bad of an option. Does that no. mean just that not that that bad of option at all? But just right. imagine if let's let's say if uh, Razer decides, hey, are we going to create an app for a Chromecast? Oh my gosh, that's awesome, right? Yeah. You can just download the Cortex app on your Chromecast, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> all right, Tony, what else you got, man? So in the same vein of uh, talking about Razer, they announced and showed off their OS VR, which is their new uh, project, open source VR. This is a really <laughs> cool right. idea um, in that it's very inexpensive. They have uh, dual lenses. So instead of just the single lens, like concave lens, they have concave and convex lenses in this uh, device here. It can connect uh, to like controllers. In the video demo that Engadget used, they, the guy used two nunchucks for the Wii, for what, what it looked like to me. And um, it's running a not the greatest processor or the greatest screen. The screen is like a God, what did he say? It's it's it you know fairly pixelated and um, it's nowhere near the quality <laughs> well, of like dead or is that his description? <laughs> yes. Yeah, why, like, why, that, why would I say that? I didn't no, try it. <laughs> he's afraid to say, what how is the screen of your device? Well it's fairly pixelated and doesn't look no, like I'm the, the reviewer said that. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow, yeah. that, that sucks. 
Well, it's the truth. For two hundred bucks, though, you get a uh, you know hackers and de and devs can jump in on this. Because if you look at all the VR that's out right now, what what are your choices? You've got Oculus, which is fifteen hundred. You've got the Samsung Gear VR, which you have to buy a, G a Galaxy Note four and the G Gear VR. So that's upwards of a thousand dollars right there too if you buy a. a uh, I was gonna say, what about the Sony one? You got, yeah, you've got Morpheus. Sony. Yeah. That's not even out yet, though. You can't buy that. <laughs> you can't buy that. What you can buy right now, or, uh, I guess, up until up until March. But cardboard is also limited in that you don't have a full peripheral. I know I said last time you get you get a full peripheral. You get in you get the um, a a software. Uh, induced peripheral, but there are times where you'll look at the edge of of the uh, image that you're looking at, and it starts to blur out. This one supposedly it looks like it, it, you feel that much more immersed in it, and it's still tethered like uh, the uh, like the Oculus Rift. All of them. All All of them. them. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, I mean, the nice thing about the uh, the Samsung Galaxy VR is that you're tethered to the phone, which is connected to the headset, which is on your face. And so it's all like it's all unless you have like a wireless Bluetooth controller, so you can walk around in the environment. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't think we should see anything amazing out of this uh, right now. But this definitely is a um, you know a, not not necessarily a poor man's introduction into uh, the VR community, but it's going to give those people that are interested in VR, especially like in colleges and other development communities, um, a cheaper way to you know, up their game because the APIs are a lot more advanced than Cardboard Chalk. So, awesome. Yeah. Hmm. awesome. I'm a, I'm, as you know, I'm, I'm still a big proponent of my Cardboard. I got it here somewhere, and I was messing around with it all throughout the holidays. But uh, I'm, not a dev, I'm not a developer uh, of games whatsoever, so if I were to buy this, it would just... Look pretty, so I, I'm excited to see like what people actually do with it. Like pretty, Ricky. All right, so <laughs> okay, now we're at you, Andrew. What do you got, man? Uh, I got nothing. No, you do. You got that big Sony one. Go into it, dude. Oh no, that's a keynote, man. <laughs> no, well, there's. I said if you have that, pick a topic or two within it. Hmm. I didn't want. <laughs> We'll come back to him. All right, cool. So, yeah, go ahead and grab something within the keynote, all right? Mm. All right, back to you, Rad. What do we got? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, we got the Alienware laptops, uh -oh. which is uh, something along the lines I know Andrew has. Uh, you already yeah. have your Alienware, right? Is yeah, I have an 18 right now. Yeah, the so 18. Do, yeah. Do they do one every year, it seems like? Uh, <laughs> no, they just released them, like, last year. I mean, every year, like I said, <laughs> just do them um, every year, don't they? I it guess. Looks like there's just more things. I think the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway is right now they just created a brand new line, obviously with bigger specs. Still the same thing, but their, you know, their philosophy is like forget about making it thin. Just put as much power as you can. <laughs> so now, uh, aside from just trying to, you know, add more power, the big thing that the big takeaway is that there's now an optional 4K display to add to your 14 or your 15 inch options as well as your 17 which is nuts so um, which just brings the, begs the question you think 4k <laughs> is pointless at that size of uh, display or do you th see a difference like for me know. at least I've exper I've seen it once or twice in in old review models playing with Dell's laptop I mean Dell's with QHD and things like that but a 4k that's even sharper so I can't even imagine like how uh, how much more sharper that would be, you know, and whether I care about anti-aliasing or not. And the other thing too, I, I I'm trying to wonder is, um, you know, uh, at what point will games really take advantage of that much resolution? Probably not, right, Andrew? I mean, do you think HD is still going to be pretty much the norm for a, quite a while? You know, I'm pretty sure there's a niche for the 4K people. I mean, you can kind of see that with the TVs now. But I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah like you like you were uh, like what it looks like right now, it's a definitely it, full HD right now is kind of the standard. I mean, yeah. it took look how long it took us to get to that yeah. level it, right now. But I mean, at these at the screen size, having mm -hmm. you know having 4K it almost appears to be f overkill. It's more of just there as a talking novelty. point to be able to say that. Yeah, exactly. It's, like it's more of like isn't a novelty. Like, isn't like a Call of Duty or an Assassin's Creed game 4K, like only one or two on the PC, and that's about it right now. Yeah. I mean, if I remember right. Yeah. 
as high resolutions as you can. I mean, the updated version of Crisis 6 allows you to run up to closest to 4K, you know, like 2560 or Quad HD, so, uh, which is as close as you could get to 4K, you know what I mean? But this stuff right now, I mean, now they're asking that they have these, um, I don't know if you're also familiar, Andrew, with this thing called the desk-bound amplifier, which allows you to use the desk, the desktop to, to overclock your CPU. I mean, the heck? it's crazy. So if you have a desktop sitting around next to your laptop and you decide you want more power, you can connect what's called an amplifier port, which allows oh you to get more graphics power. I'm like, I might have bucks. a nuclear meltdown if I do that. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure uh, you just saying that. that. Being, I don't know. Like, there's nope. like, like a Tim <laughs> Toolman Taylor version of PC gamers, but if he's out there, you know, this is the exact kind of product for him. Um, but... Definitely. Uh, yeah, it is pretty ridiculous. Definitely. I mean, you have a desktop class GPU already sitting inside your, uh, inside your, you know, your Alienware. Some it's of them, some of which have like it's a, mobile, it's a mobile version. It's yeah, not and it's a mobile. <laughs> yeah. It's a mobile version. It's not pretty enough. Much. Sorry, but I gotta make a distinction. It's, it's a mobile yeah. one. Sorry. I need more. It's not enough. <laughs> well, if you want to add another laptop to the mix just to use the power, you can do so with your amplifier port. This thing is um, huge. It is ridiculously huge, but that's definitely been Alienware's you know, mantra. Just make things as fast as possible. And as fast um, as possible. <laughs> and as fast as possible, yeah. So. Um, but yes, it still starts at fourteen ninety nine, at least for the 17-inch displayed version. And uh, But for this one... Surprisingly, there's no 4K option, so I take that back. But oh. for the, but you know, curious, you know, curiously, for the smaller screens, they have 4K options, which is very weird. But then again, you know, it, it all just comes down to price. If they're saying that the you know the price of the laptop will hit 4,000 having a 4K display on a 17-inch laptop, then yeah, I think they probably were playing their numbers with that. So, and when I say that, I mean like their marketing. So, um, but other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, I wasn't expecting Alienware to release laptops right away, but I was surprised that they did this. But then again, you know, this is not too much, not too hard of an upgrade to do, right? Like there doesn't seem to be any difference in the design. You know, everything is still similar. There hasn't been any changes in the size, obviously. You know, I thought they're going to be at least refreshing their lineup a little bit more, but not that much different here. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, for those who are interested in Alienware and are in the market for looking for a fast laptop or decide to power up with their desktop, they can do so. <laughs> but, awesome. uh, yeah. All right, Tony, what do you got? So on that Alienware, uh, one of the photos was a, a picture of the Intel i7, and mm -hmm. Intel announced a new line of uh, core, uh, core chips. Uh, it's the fifth generation Broadwell. Mm -hmm. So Broadwell... Um, just to make it simple, it's a smaller chip, physically a smaller chip, but it uh, runs cooler, uh, better power management, and uh, they're going to be supporting i3 all the way up to i5, including uh, Core i5 V Pro and uh, Core i7 V Pro. And even the new Celeron and Pentium chips are getting a little bit of a boost uh, with the 14NM process. And um, there's also going to be some uh, smaller chips for tablets, a uh, code name Cherry Trail, hmm. Cherry but... Trail, <laughs> um, Sorry. as opposed to I guess Atom, the Atom processor right now, which is Bay Trail. That's that's where the Atom mm -hmm. processor is right now. So yeah, I mean this is what's going on here. Why is it doing that? This is all good stuff because that just means the next iteration of computers um, are are just going to run a lot quicker. And the the, the thing is like. Uh, where, where I work, I deal with customers all the time. They say, oh, I don't need a powerful computer because I don't game. This has nothing to do with gaming whatsoever. This has to do with everything of you being able to spend the money now and having an investment that's going to last you a lot longer. And with these new chips, it's going to uh, allow the device, hopefully, allow the device to last a few more years even beyond uh, how they uh, last right now. So um, they have a few... Um, devices on the floor at CES right now that are showing this new Broadwell chip right now. Um, I think Acer is one of them. Lenovo definitely has a few devices that are, show, that are showing off the, the, the new Broadwell chips. Um, but they did mention that the Alienware, Alienwares will have them once they uh, support quad-core um, for the, the, which would also upscale for 4K and that sort of thing. So, yeah, because I think they're running, uh, your question. I think they're running for, uh, the fourth gens right now. 
Yeah, they're all running fourth gen. Mine, I think mine's a third gen. Yeah, so you're old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to double check on that one, but I think I'm either running third or fourth gen. But this also not only applies to just you know Windows stuff. This will apply to Chromebooks. It'll apply to um, you know apply to uh, you know uh, Windows. Uh, sorry, not Windows. Uh, Android tablets because a few Android tablets are getting uh, Intel-based chips as well, and um, and your Macs. Your Macs are all uh, Intel-based too. So this is all good goody stuff for everybody. So <laughs> one family. Yay, Intel. Oh God, I've just got so much training I got to do now. Uh. <laughs> All right, Andrew, what do you got next, man? Yeah, so yeah, it's a forty. It is a forty-seven hundred. So yeah, fourth gen. Um, you guys like Sony TVs, right? Uh, if, if I could afford sort them. Of. I <laughs> only like them if they <laughs> if come as one. two <laughs> like, TVs. I, do you have two money. TVs? No. <laughs> so, anyways, um, during their uh, whole press conference, you know how Sony does a little thing during day zero, I guess. So they were announcing that all of their twenty fifteen televisions will be running on the new Android TV platform. Um, they also really? will be. Woo! I was like, really? Oh wow! Uh, Seventeen thirty-one. So I have to sort through all this really quick. We would lose Rat. Yes. And then yeah. uh, they'll also be having, I guess, uh, Google Play, Google Cast, Voice Search, Smartwatch compatibility mm. on their new TVs. I don't know if it's specific models. I didn't see it there. Um, they also talked about their uh, X1 processor upgrades as far as uh, relation relating to. Excuse me. Welcome back. Image Brad. quality of any source, higher yeah. dynamic range, deeper blacks. They're also definitely yeah. taking a bigger focus on 4K as well, just like I would say any other company out there now. Oh, Rad's back. Shh, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, that is, so Google Play, Google uh, uh, Google Play one just got, I was like, what, really? Oh, that's actually not bad. Voice search is another interesting one. I'm like, yeah, are we, all are the we happy? We're, TVs. We're, all talking, we're all talking to our TVs, everybody. We're, everyone will be talking to our TVs. We're going to continue you, talking to them. <laughs> I was going to say, the only one that I know... Eric... Oh, good. No, I was going to say, you guys remember when Eric Schmidt said that Google TV is going to be in about 50% yeah. of TV? <laughs> we laughed. Well, he was wrong. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the, the, the fact that Android TV just kind of came out with the Nexus player later on last year, it we're... Maybe, maybe Android TV is going to be the win for for Google in the TV space, you know, uh, other than a set top box. So, I'm excited <laughs> for this. You know, you know what I'm. Excited. I haven't been. A, I haven't. That doesn't work. Next stop, Chrome TV. I know. Because right? <laughs> <There you go. laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. um, I think the only one that even remotely comes close, if or comes close at all, is uh, Samsung. I think, right? Yeah, Samsung uses the ties and open source That's on their right. TVs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I want to say. Uh, they, they they say Tizen, not Tizen. So for those who say that I'm saying it wrong, you're saying it wrong. Oh, also one more thing. Ooh. So they also showed a uh, a new model of television at CES. It's their X900 know. series, uh, X900C series, 4K television. It's their thinnest LCD. LCD. No I thought it was L mm, That's interesting. It's an LCD television. I don't know if that's a typo. I'm pretty sure it might be LED. Um, it's two tenths of an inch thick. It's thinner than really? uh, the quantum dots. Wait, it's thinner. It says thinner than an Xperia phone. Holy crap! Really? I'd I'd like to see it to believe it, but I don't know. Okay. I mean, so, I can only think of heat problems. But if they got that solved, <laughs> that means you, there's a separate power this? source. Okay, you guys uh, see this screw on, on the not not the logo, but you see the screw on this <laughs> chapstick. Yeah. That's how thin it is. That width of that screw, that's how thin the TV is. That's that that's, means I'm looking this up because <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah, and that's all the all the devil. all the brain <laughs> that is sold me in on. The I was like, brain. what? Yeah, I was like, all, there yeah, has been the, the brain is in the base so and everything. It's it's pretty insane. Wow. What the that's heck? That's as thin as the tablet. And I'm not talking about TV like a a regular like touch tab. I'm talking about like a medicine tablet. <laughs> yeah, I think it's thin. I think it's well, like that. Yeah, um, LCD. Dude, that, okay, I'm I'm. I don't know that guy, If something that thin on the wall might get lost in the wall, I might lose it. I'm like, where did TV? Dude, I might break it. By <laughs> well, no, I don't think you, Sean. I don't think you can put it on the wall. Is it that because, heavy too? No, or is no, it... it's not that. The brains is in the base. 
you have to have oh. it connected to said base. Well, there's not a cable that connects the base to the top where you can hang it on the wall and run a cable down and have the base hidden in the corner, maybe? Oh, oh yeah, you can't that, do that. If you, no. you, you can't? Well, no, you're saying, okay, so wait, Tony, are you saying that there's no, it doesn't convex out from the back, it's just flat all the way that entire time? Yes. Wow. Yeah, there's no way you could do anything from the back. Everything has to come from the bottom. Yeah, right. because uh, how are you going to screw it on, too? No, you That's can't. Everything. So it would have to be a, a bezel would have to be thick enough too, so that uh, any cable that goes into it, even HDMI, would need to be you know pushed into it, right? Right, so, and that goes into the base. There's yeah. nothing on the back. There's like, wow. like it's 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 the thickness of my ring, and then your screw to screw it into the mount is the thickness of my thumb, and that right. just doesn't. That's just weird looking, actually. <laughs> but I, but you see you see the point. The, the, right, guys. I'm sending you a link. Oh wait, no, bad link. Sorry, bad link. Sorry, bad I thought link. I was someone. Bad link. Bad link. Don't go to that link. <laughs> Do not go to that man. link. The oh, link is a bad God. link, everybody. <laughs> no, the link. It's like X900 C series. X900 C series. I'm gonna find this this TV. I'm like, I need to look and see what this damn thing I don't looks think like. They release Here much because I'm, uh, I'm looking at a lot of the links. They just. Ugh. I just I just went to the Verge. Um, they uh, their YouTube channel. The one of their guys uh, took a look at it up close, and I was like, ooh, pretty. So where is the base? I mean, it's like it's all it's on, the, the electronics are in the bottom of the TV. The yeah, it's the the stand that they have on there is it's not your typical stand. standard. That's it's the, not your the base. That is still standard. It's got want legs on each end of the TV. Some of the TVs are designed that way now, which kind of make it a little troublesome if you're gonna put it on a stand. You're telling me. Oh right, well, right, we'll see how that turns out. Well, I like the idea of it. I just don't. The stand mm. is stupid. They should put it like a, a box so I can plug everything into and then run a cable. Oh, the stand is optional, right? Really, it's you not... want an ugly cable? Dude, what? I would rather have an ugly cable because I could hide an ugly cable and behind I can hide it behind stuff and have the cable and just have it look invisible, not have it n in my face. Like I'll they don't put, make the box look terrible though. I I'm like just, calling it a box makes it think like it's a box. So this is a nice mount. I mean, it's a, a nice box about the stand. size of this little computer, like this big, where it has all the connections Eight and one little damn cable. Man. Uh, not, all right, I'm like, what do you? Uh, we don't know yet. <laughs> but yeah, well, there must be more than that because the current one that's out there right now at seventy-four inches is twenty thousand. Oh, that's oh, all. Well, this is only a thirty thousand yeah. dollars TV we're talking about, guys. About forty. <laughs> All right. Want to talk about overpriced? Want to talk? Hey, I'm taking this one here. Andrew, I'm stealing this from your Sony article because I saw this and I was like, I couldn't. Oh, okay. This. The Walkman. Did you guys hear about the? Yeah. Walkman? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. I forgot about that. What? Yeah. Someone's really into going Galaxy's version of it. All right. So just so everybody gets this, this is a Walkman that plays uncompressed file formats, as if there's no other devices that do that. It supports Direct Stream Digital (DSD), which is the same as Super Audio CD, Wave A. Flat and Apple lossless and a couple other formats. So Wave, as you know, is the default format that most audio files are recorded at when they're recorded in studio. Same with AFE is the Apple equivalent to Wave. So they both really do the exact same thing. All right, so this is a what is this thing? Twelve hundred dollar portable Walkman audio file quality. I'll take two. <laughs> 128 gigabyte built-in storage, touchscreen, even has, what was that, like a leather back on it or something? What was the back of this thing here? Some kind of sexy... Carbon fiber. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it looks like the whole wallet on the back of it oh, and everything. Oh, no, it's leather, it's leather. Yeah. I was joking about the color. <laughs> yeah, you got like a leather back on it and everything, and... guy, this is a $1,500 Walkman, bro. I mean, a $1,200 Walkman. I like it. That's cool. No one's going to buy it. Yeah. You know about last year's no, model. That is absolutely not true. <laughs> that is absolutely not true. The vast majority of people are not going to buy it, Sean. This is audio be... file. No, no, no. This is for the same people who buy those turntables that float, that have those special stands that floats the turntables so that they never touch the ground so that when you're playing you get perfect uh, no jitter and no bugging. That's not a joke. This is real. This is a real thing. There, that exists. And I, I actually talked to a guy out in Denver who has this great business, and he, his whole business is selling those diet devices. And he says, I make a killing. People out here in Denver, all these rich movie stars, go out there and buy these $40,000 tape decks that do this one special thing that's amazing. And it's $30,000 turntable because the record flips so they can listen to their old Beatles record in this special way. And it's $1,000 needle that makes it play a certain way. And I'm like, what the heck is wrong with you people? That person would pay $1,200 for this. 
So is this going to go well, like if they were to uh, show this off again at the at that show that you go to every every other year? No, no, they're gonna, this is going to go well at some show. They're going to sell make probably make 2000 of these and sell them. That's total. where the wire comes out. What is that? Is that No, is What is it that? Thing? That? It's like a gold disc it looks like. So my gut tells me that they play, probably made it like a gold plated connection with some kind of high end output preamp, <laughs> I mean output section to make sure you get the best sound quality coming out. I would put money down. That's why that thing is so big. Sure, they probably have like to put a better converter the designer in it. and said, I want this. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. high-res audio. No, it's the converters. When you put large, good converters, things take up more space. So my gut tells me that's for the electronics to make sure you get optimum sound quality that probably 0.0% of the people in the world can hear a difference of. Hey, I was going to say, it doesn't, doesn't suggest that it's running any type of built-in memory, but they did say that you could probably throw in... It's a 128 three. gigs memory. Oh, okay. And micro SD. And micro SD yep. expandable. Yep. Yeah, I misread that. Sorry. No, no, it's all good. We we forgive you. No, just kidding. Man, I made a mistake earlier, so it's okay. But uh, so, Jelly Bean, <laughs> it's running Jelly Bean. <laughs> there you go. It's running yeah, Jelly Bean. Yeah, it is. Dude, I'm I just, what the know, heck, I, man? You, it's just funny. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, you know, and just so you know, they released another Walkman for what, four hundred dollars or three hundred dollars? Three hundred, three hundred. Yeah, that's for the lay people. This is for the people in Dubai. There you go. All right, so Rad, what do you got, man? <laughs> I got nothing else, really. <laughs> You're kidding. You went through your whole list? Yeah. All right, Tony. I think got? I went through my entire list, to be yeah. honest. No way. All right, I Tony, think. what do you got, man? Uh, I'm going to go through your list in a minute anyway, Fred. There, make there, sure was, good. there, were, there was a lot. A um, few new drones that we saw. There's this belt that will expand <laughs> automatically and shrink depending on your waist. <laughs> what? Um, wait, wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> wait, say that again? There's a belt that yeah there there's a mechanic there's a mechanism in the belt that will shrink uh with the uh, shrink and expand depending if you're sitting or standing if you've you know packed on some pounds after Thanksgiving meal uh, <laughs> I don't really know the specifications Isn't on it I'm just, a... I'm just listing the things that I that I heard through through the grapevine but the one thing I wanted to touch on and I want to hear your you guys on your uh, opinion uh, Rad this was actually you. HP has announced the HP Stream Mini, which is a desktop oh, yeah, right. device that is very much going into the uh, the uh, against the Chrome base um, market, where you know it's a very inexpensive uh, desktop. And you just connect your keyboard, mouse, and uh, and monitor to, and it's all Chrome. Well, mm -hmm. HP did the same thing, but with Windows uh, Windows 8.1 with Bing, and it's yeah, it's not powerful whatsoever, but it's full Windows. Um, I don't know if you get any kind of like perk like Office 365 for a year or anything like that. Um, but it's uh, either running Celeron or Pentium CPUs. I would go with the Pentium if you can. Um, it has 4 gigabytes of RAM, 500 gigabyte hard drive, two USB 3.0 outputs on the front, two more on the back, uh, HDMI mm -hmm. and uh, digital port outputs, audio output, Ethernet jack, Surprised it has an Ethernet jack. Um, that's a good thing. And uh, yeah, for I don't know if they have a price on this at all. Uh, oh yeah, here we go. Uh, United States price starting at three hundred and twenty dollars. Um, that's pretty good. Cool. And and then the stream. Okay, so there's actually two. There's the stream and then the stream mini is a uh, hundred and seventy nine dollars. Well, that's crazy. Um, okay, so the Stream is the 500 gigabyte hard drive one, and then the Stream Mini is a smaller one with a 32 gigabyte SSD. So Lux. this is going for Grandma. This is Grandma yeah. who just wants to get online, or <laughs> your your six year old that you just want to have them watch specific Netflix or YouTube videos that you can monitor and mm -hmm. nothing else. But do you yep. guys think that that market is big enough for people to jump on this? I don't know. It feels like it's saturated already. Right? <laughs> because, like the that market has been around for so long, and HP just felt like they discovered it. <laughs> right? It's basically it's the HTPC again, right? But now it's smaller, cheaper, which they've been doing for years, and 
Um, but HTPC hasn't really been a consumer, like everyday consumer product facing. No, so. but yeah, so but they're more and more becoming like that, you know, with a lot of these boxes now, including XBMC and stuff like that, mm-hmm. or XBMC like features. I mean, Android is kind of knocking the wall down, and Fire TV was kind of being like that. This one is that and having your PC. So now, you know, um, would you have the Mac Mini was sort of that thing, right? Or you have that, and you could connect it to uh, your, you know, a monitor, or connect it downstairs through HDMI. Um, but now, with this, they're just getting into the market pretty late. Um, but who knows? It might still work out, considering the price point. Um, if they could get it even down more, assuming how HP works, they usually like the price high and then go low. Um, but I don't know. They have the money in the world to be able to experiment like this. So yeah, I mean, anecdotally, uh, HP has their Stream 11, which is I think it's like 199, and it's going up as again, it's going directly up against uh, uh, the Chromebooks, and yep. it's running full Windows 8.1 with Bing. Also, only has like two gigabytes of RAM, a Celeron processor, and 32 gigabyte hard drive. But it's sold out almost everywhere that you go. Now you could argue that it's just you know false supply and demand. But the fact is, I get a lot of people asking about it, and they say that's all we need for grandma. Like, yeah. Okay, like I could yeah. sell you a computer that's only twenty dollars more, and grandma will get more. And they say no, we want this one. It's like okay, well you got to order it then. So yeah. it's it'll be interesting to see if this actually uh, sells in the wild. I know the Chrome base, like the LG Chrome base, did not like. Whatsoever, so I, at yeah. least not on a wide scale. So. You know, the crazy interesting about it, dude, is that even HP, believe it or not, is rec- recognizable by your grandma and grandpa. You know, that's they, yeah. they've been around. They've been like, around, around yeah. It's been around, yeah. yeah and it yeah. was like, oh, it's grandson and granddaughter. It's the people who don't recognize. It. Exactly. <laughs> They'll just look at, but but for those guys of people, it's perfect for that kind of market to be able to say, you know, you go to Best Buy, you go, I want a full fledged computer. Here's one for 179 bucks. You know what I mean? Right. 319 and it's easy to do that and then you just have a, a monitor for 70 bucks you're done you know what I mean I already have my old mouse and keyboard that's like Bluetooth ready and I just hook up my stuff and it works I mean you got a serial so. port what are you talking about bro serial <laughs> port <laughs> yeah. PS2 connection rad you <laughs> said old mouse about? and keyboard bro come on let's get it right here right <laughs> hey we're not jumping serial back to connection now, are we and, uh, goodness uh, man you can't even plug in the power no more Dude, no, don't let me start. I have a computer <laughs> like that that has that. It drives me nuts. Some guy gave me a computer, and I was like, fine, I'll take it. I look at it, plug it. I'm like, I can't even plug anything into it. It's just sitting there. It's like, hey. <laughs> I still have my serial cable sitting around. I'm like, that's a cable. I, do, I have to go find one. <laughs> Andrew, what else you got, man? What you... Oh, nothing much. Just another headset. <laughs> that's about it. What just, headset uh, is that? Oh, it's another mad ca- Oh, crap. I just hit the... Wrong button. <laughs> it's got comes in candy colors. Uh, it looks pretty neat. Skittles, it's like the Skittles. It, it, it really reminds me of like car paint, literally. Jeez, some sugar, sugar. All, all I know it's is it's, 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 it's pretty it's sick. A nice, it's, it's a it's a wireless Bluetooth. Supposedly you can also tie it into your cell phone. So something neat to try out. I didn't see any prices on this yet, but you know, considering that I always. The only problem I'm having with right now is the one I'm using is I keep on snagging it all the time, so kind of being kind of interested in seeing how that works. But mm-hmm. awesome. But yeah, awesome. literally candy colors. <laughs> well, I got a couple here real quick here, and then after that we can kind of see we probably blow through whatever last ones we have here. But real fast, actually, I was going through this list and I was like, oh, I'm surprised we didn't mention that one. 18.5 PS4 sold. Oh yeah. Oh man! Yeah, that's a lot. That's like a good amount. Freaking <laughs> <laughs> a lot of freaking consoles! Holy crap! So yeah, eighteen point five year to, uh, lifetime to date. That's a lot. Sony also introduced a symphonic light speaker, which is apparently this one that looks like a lamp that it has a speaker built in. So they're building all these little lamp fixtures. So can you guys imagine going into a house where there's a chandelier, but the music is is the soft music is actually emanating from the chandelier playing down. They're nice looking. I saw them. Yeah. They're, they're actually nice looking. So, I know they're using, I like how they say it. they're using Sony's vertical drive technology. So when I looked it up it went right back to the speaker. So I was like, "Oh, this is some way they got sound out of that speaker. Got it." All right. <laughs> I was like, "Nothing." All right. So, um, the Roku TV. 
I guess Roku has made a deal with a couple manufacturers to um, have their prep technology put into a couple um, brands. I think it's um, do, 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 Insignia and Harrier or High Harrier or something like that. I thought they did that with Hisense last time. Well, apparently they got a couple more people in there now. Nice. So I guess Roku's expanding there. Uh, HP has a new uh, 4K and 5K video. By the way, real fast, your take on 5K video. Considering how we're getting now, we're just now getting 4K TVs, and now they're already talking about 5K screens for monitors for computers. So We talked about this during our, our, our predictions episode, and they're just pushing the envelope. Okay, yeah. so... Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's 8K TVs out there right now yeah. that, that are on the show floor. We don't need that. What the... What the heck, man? Hollywood. <laughs> All right. All right. We talked about the mobile fan. Uh, what is this? Uh, Kiwid announced an upgrade program to its smart lock system, Kivo Plus. So if you're into that, you can go ahead and check into that. Uh, something on the road, GM, new Chevy Volts got announced. If you're you know, into that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, on, of the, oh, here. Uh, talk about this one. <laughs> yeah. Two, Starting in 2016, models of cars OnStar will help keep drivers from getting stranded by sending notifications when it first spots troubled cars with when when it starts starts ah, spots trouble with a car's battery, starter motor, or fuel system. It'll also hmm. yeah okay that's good thank you for doing that. <laughs> it's like uh, Tony uh, oh what is this power tap outlets went to what what. <laughs> You can decide how much juice to come from your outlet. <laughs> I don't know if it's how much rather than just turning it on and off. That's disgusting. I, I was going to say, you, you know how I was asking you guys if we had a weird category? This is a weird category. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Funny category. Yeah, it's like, hilarious. <laughs> if someone saw this on my outlet, I'd be like, oh, where's the bathroom then? <laughs> All right, what else we got? <laughs> I that's just weird. <laughs> All right, on your body, here's some more wearables. Here, one gadget. So uh, Witherings today announced not a uh, da, 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 a semi smart watch called the oh god, this is a French word. I'm about to have Tony translate this. Activate pop, activate pop, activate activate pop. Thank you, activity pop. <laughs> it's a pretty typical watch. Uh, underlying fitness, so some I don't know. I don't know about that one, Tony. It no, oh, it doesn't look all that great. But at least it's it not looks bulky. nice. It's not bulky though, at least, right? It's supposed to have kind of a not minimalist, but more of a, a the standard watch feel <laughs> that doesn't look like a smartwatch. I'm sorry, I'm thinking like le not a minimalist, but less a or something or something. <laughs> wow, you crack yourself up with your own jokes, don't you? No, All no, I just, I, no, no, I just thought about thinking like I'm, I was like minimalist. I'm like, no, that is the right word for it, isn't it? <laughs> know, um, Rad, you put in your notes something about Palm. Do you remember what that was all about? I got rats notes uh, right here. Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to look at my notes. TCL to bring yeah. back Palm. Bring You're back kidding. Back. Yeah, they're trying to bring back Palm. Why? Wow. As a brand name. Yeah, well, they're just trying to bring it back. Oh, yeah, I think they're trying to bring back the, the brand. But, uh, like, what OS would they use? They can't – unless they use the open source version of WebOS. They, yeah. That's – I don't know. <laughs> I like I just, this one, this article from the Register. They literally had – uh, a picture of a surgeon going into some guy's stomach saying they're trying to bring back Palm. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. This is where the big old ugly thumbnail of some you know, like doctors trying to bring this back guy, this dead guy alive. Um, and so it looks like it doesn't even seem clear right here. I'm just reading it now because that's how lazy we are, guys. Um, TCL already sells Android-based smartphones in various schools, but yes, it looks like they're appearing to bring back the whole handheld. Um, there's so TCL is said it is hoping to get input from the worldwide Palm enthusiast community, making it the largest scale crowdsourced project ever seen in industry. So they're trying to really bring back Palm as we knew it uh, from way back in the days. I would probably say way back, considering how quickly it died. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's pretty insane. Um, and it says here, we are all open to ideas, but probably not WebOS, according to Guo, which I think is the, C the chief executive of TCL. <laughs> so uh, they're open to all ideas except for not WebOS, which is what the last thing Palm was when they released it, which is hilarious. Um, but he says that the objective goes far beyond proposing a more advanced device. It is to deliver absolute break breakthrough innovations in technology, which is still very much 
I it's very vague, you know, and not very clear what it means to bring back Palm. Maybe just to buy the <laughs> just to buy the name. I don't know. That's I all they can buy. Are. All all they bought was were the rights to the name yeah. and the logo. Yeah, uh, right. got it. So yeah. people are going to come back and think it's a palm company. But you know what's funny? In the guitar industry, countless uh, companies, it's like, oh, I didn't know this company's still around. And they're not. <laughs> no, no, it's just the name. They got bought and this whole other company's running them and they just using the name. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a common thing. So, yep. I'm interested in this oven with the virtual flames. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, that is hilarious. I, I freaking love this thing, man. <laughs> I, I was so cracking up, man. I so, want this in my house. Yeah, I do too. So I guess this is a, a an induction cooktop. It doesn't get hot, I guess. They use magnets yeah. to heat the fry yeah, pans. So, but, are you guys familiar with induction? Like, Well, you guys are familiar with ovens, obviously, right? You're familiar no. with those ovens well, that have... I am. The, well, the ones that are the range, the range ones where they're flat and they provide heat, right? Yeah. So, those kinds are more common nowadays, right? But the mm -hmm. induction are the ones that don't have any heat whatsoever. On the so you could turn it on, put your hand on it, you wouldn't feel any heat at all. All the heat comes from these special pans that have induction inside it. Basically, a special type of metal that heat up. So the only thing that gets hot is the actual pot itself. So, but the cool thing is, no one really knows when they're on or off. So Samsung decided to take it upon themselves to actually put like virtual flames around it. So when you turn it on, <laughs> your induction, you know that it's on rather than it's off, which is hilarious. So I was like, oh man, that's pretty awesome, you know. You um, know that's smart. It's it is smart, smart actually. It's a very <laughs> smart idea. You know, and there's a lot of people that I know who are really into their cooking and to in, and especially into induction ovens. It's been a huge buzz in like the cooking community. But to have this, um, I forwarded it to like a forum. I can't find the link right now, but I forwarded it to a forum, and it's now exploding. over like, wow, this has virtual flames. That's awesome. <laughs> So, you know um, I'm shopping for an induction oven right now, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> the minute you brought this up, I'm like, it does what? Oh, my God. I need to find one. I know, one. man. I can, I can I work got, on my burrito. <laughs> man, I got, I'm going to go here still lighting up a fire to get my thing. I'm here popping popcorn on top of the eye. The um, If anyone remembers how to pop cop, popcorn on top of an eye of an oven. If so you did you get a chance to watch that. the video? Because this is pretty funny. Not um, yet, but I will be, I, I'm just looking at it, and I'm like, this is pretty awesome. So It is awesome. It All is right. awesome. All right. Anything else here? Anyone else has um, to bring here? Any last-minute uh, CES things that you saw, Bo? It's it's not CES related, but Office for uh, Android Tablet Preview is now available for everybody. You don't need an invite. So as long as you have a tablet that's between seven to ten inches and it's running uh, KitKat or Lollipop, you can download it for free through the Google Play Store. There you go. All right, Sue. Add anything else here? I'll just oh, leave no, them good. leave everything with like an animated gif of like Bill Gates drinking poop water. Yes. That's, yeah, well that's just water world rating to happen. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, what about you? Nah, I'm good. Pretty awesome. Um, oh. Got nothing for you, man. <laughs> awesome. All right. So I hope everybody enjoyed our CES thing. We just went around, had some fun, talked about a lot of the cool things. Hopefully you managed to hear a thing or two that you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm interested in that. I wouldn't mind getting my very thin Android tablet, not Android tablet, or a tablet with the, yeah, it is an Android tablet with the camera at the bottom, or my whatever Palm branded something because it's back. More importantly, USB Type-C. That was kind of cool. Anyway, so I hope you guys all enjoyed it. We'll be back next week. We'll be having more typical formats to our podcast next week. Um, and guess what? Yes, if you happen to like mobile, there is going to be another show that will be pre creeping up on it here about mobile. So, Tony, want to tell them real quick about what you are bringing back to life and have coming back here again? I didn't know I was talking about it. Okay, oh, yeah. I so I think the email more... and you're hinting at it, so I figured you've already <laughs> announced it. I thought you mentioned it last week on a podcast. No, 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 no. Yeah. So um, the mobile lounge and slash wireless weekly is going to be merged into the mobile lounge weekly. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a there's a ton of mobile news, and as as you guys know, if you if you've been a follow follower of uh, at least Deck Guys, I, that's like my main focus. It's what I eat, breathe, sleep, talk about that, and and Microsoft all day. So, um, we'll we'll be uh, doing that episode of uh, mobile 
sometime during the week where I have to figure out when I can get guests on you know, and have Sean or and or Rad or somebody else to uh, kind of co-host with and possibly even have it a little bit earlier on on like a Sunday or something if that works with everybody's schedule. So we'll figure it out, but it's coming back. So if you like a more mobile-centric show, it's all about Android and iOS and Windows Phone and Android and Firefox Mobile and Android, let me know. <laughs> Um, you can hit us up on uh, all, all the feeds that Sean's about to read off. Um, email's coming up in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, we're coming back. Awesome. I'm, we keep telling people it's going to be big. It's going to be huge. It's going to be great. And, Bob, what's the name of the show again? The Mobile Wireless Weekly. What was it going to get? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I'm going to call it, like, I'm going to call it like, like uh, <laughs> I'm going to call it like fiber for breakfast and get people like what the heck is all this about and just talk about phones. Tony's <laughs> phones and tablets. Make Tony's sure you lounge. Do that in the morning, dude. That'd be great if Tony's you did. Tony's mobile lounge. I don't know mobile lounge in the morning. Ooh, Ooh morning. Ooh, right. Tony's lounge. They're going to hang out with Tony I in the have lounge. To be at four in the morning, the man. That's the cafe. <laughs> <time I was laughs> yeah. Everybody, thank you again for hanging out with us. Let me give you some contact information for us. You can email us at comments at lazytechguys.com. You can also give us a call at area code 707-722-5299. Now, if you would like to eat, uh, reach us on social networks. You can be found on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus if you look up Lazy Tech Guys. And our YouTube account is Lazy Tech TV. So that's definitely where you want to go subscribe to us and well, follow us and stay on top of it. We have a lot of stuff that stays on top of there and more. Um, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Remember that URL, audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. Free month of your audible, audible.com. This is a great audiobook service. Works on every device. 150,000 books to choose from. Really cool service. And most important of all, it's a freebie to get you started. And after you get it, yeah, we know you're going to get hooked up. Yeah, we know we've done that to you. But it's absolutely worth it. It's a killer service. Well, audibletrial.com forward slash lazy. So, on behalf of LTG and all the guys who are a bunch of lazy bums around here, because boy, oh boy, there's a lot of them. Thank you again for hanging out. We'll be back next week with some more technology news and all that. And with that, you guys, thanks for joining us. Have a great evening. We're out. Peace.